it's really hard. I work two jobs to be able to provide for my kids. A beam came up from underneath into the floor. Okay. Are you rolling? Are you rolling? Yep. We're okay. We're okay, guys. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's bad enough that we had to close because of the virus, and now, now, now we're probably closed because we don't have a building. One year ago today, the heart of Utah shook after a 5.7 magnitude earthquake, one of the largest in state history. 49,000 homes were left without power. Some buildings were damaged to the tune of $2 million. Since that day, the area's had over 2,500 recorded aftershocks. News specialist Jed Bull talked with Utah's top seismologists about what they learned from this quake. Keith Coper, the director of the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, characterizes the magna quake as moderate but large by Utah standards. Scientifically, it was beneficial and even helped the seismologist understand his work better. It was definitely the strongest shaking that I've ever felt from an earthquake. Keith Coper knew what it was right away because he had felt minor quakes before, but never a magnitude 5.7. Suddenly, his life's work felt very real. And it gives me a little bit more empathy, too, I think, for how really dangerous and sort of shocking it is, you know, or it's scary it is to go through something like that. In spite of the damage in Magna, it was a wake-up call for preparedness without causing catastrophic damage. Many people um, are never going to forget that. People that went through it here in Utah, they're going to remember the shaking. And so ideally what that does is it makes them prepare a little bit and think, Oh, yeah, you know, this could happen in the future. It could be much worse. From a scientific standpoint, they learned that even a moderate quake on the Wasatch Fault will produce a long sequence of aftershocks. You know, there's been over 2,600 aftershocks. And they could go on several years. From those aftershocks, they discovered the Wasatch Fault is curved downward, like the shape of a snow shovel, curving close to magna. It's a little bit closer to the surface than what we had previously thought. And so when we do get a magnitude 7 earthquake, um, we're, we're basically updating our models and, and the predicted amount of shaking from a future magnitude 7 earthquake is going to be a little bit larger than what we thought before. But seismologists still cannot predict earthquakes, even though the data from that quake helps them update their forecasts. So there's still a 50% chance that in the next 50 years, the Wasatch Fault will experience a magnitude 6.5 quake or greater. In Salt Lake City, Jed Bowl, KSL 5 News. Jed, thank you.